I'm Christine Persichetti. The Vatican has wrapped up its month-long synod on synodality, a worldwide meeting, almost a checkup of sorts, to address any issues in the church. Part of that discussion, how to welcome and better minister to LGBTQ Catholics. Inspired by that, a Catholic college in New York City just take, uh, took a major step toward inclusion. Current News' Katie Vasquez has the story from Riverdale. Annalia Santana is a Catholic and a member of the LGBTQ community. Two identities she didn't think could coexist. I was not expecting a Pride Center, so when I was like, oh my gosh, we're like having a place and like it's going to be sponsored by the school and like the school approves of it, I was very excited and very happy. Oh yeah, they are! <laughs> But now she has a place where she can feel welcome at Manhattan College's new Pride Center for LGBTQ students and staff. I want to say like in a way like healing. Of the 3,200 students at the LaSallean Catholic Institution, about 200 identify as LGBTQ along with 50 faculty members. It took roughly a year for the school to get the center off the ground, but it's part of a growing movement happening in Catholic campuses around the country. St. John's has a pride center, Fordham is on the campus pride list, Georgetown has a pride center, you know, so these are places that are doing comparable things. The discussion of inclusion for LGBTQ Catholics has long been debated in the Catholic Church. Over the last month, that topic was discussed by hundreds of delegates from all over the world at the Vatican's global synod meetings. In the past, while Pope Francis has said any sexual act outside of marriage is a sin, he has also said homosexuality is not a crime and the church is open to everyone. Staff at Manhattan College believe this center promotes that openness. A center like this communicates the broader sort of eye-opening that's going on in the church, that these are issues that are important to the people who are the future of the church. And the center has expanded its hours as more students and staff seek a safe space that makes them feel welcome. In Riverdale, the Bronx, Katie Vasquez, Current News. Outreach to LGBT Catholics wasn't the only thing discussed during the month-long meeting. Some other hot-button topics were discerned, like the possibility of women deacons and priestly celibacy. So what comes next? The bishops take the report back to their dioceses, and they'll meet again for part two next year. Meanwhile, one of the Synod participants, New York Cardinal Timothy Dolan, is turning his attention to the rise of religious hatred in the United States. In a statement, Cardinal Dolan said, we need to remember the U.S. is a place many immigrants have come to seek refuge from religious persecution. He denounced those who celebrated the Hamas attack on October 7th, saying, violence only begets more violence, not justice. At the same time, leaders from the U.S. and the Vatican are pleading for peace. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with the Israeli president Friday, calling for the protection of civilians in Gaza. Over at the Vatican, Pope Francis also stressed the need for a ceasefire. He had a call with the Palestinian president Thursday. The pope is also in daily contact with the only Catholic parish in Gaza, and that small community is feeling the impact of the fighting. That's a missile just missing Holy Family Catholic Church in Gaza, causing fear and chaos among the worshipers. Hundreds of Palestinians have sought refuge in that church, hoping it will be safe from the bombings. The parish has been praying the rosary and offering mass twice a day. Their prayers for peace are being echoed by the Franciscan friars. The order is once again celebrating their Way of the Cross procession on the streets of Jerusalem. For the past two weeks, the friars have held the procession indoors for security reasons. Then last Friday, they led the procession outside with people from the different communities in Jerusalem traveling what is believed to be the path that Jesus walked to his crucifixion. The violence happening both in the Holy Land and here in the U.S. can take a toll on a person's mental health. It's all part of an ongoing crisis happening around the country, with the National Alliance on Mental Illness saying one in five U.S. adults experience it each year. But helping Catholics fight this crisis, the U.S. bishops. There's a veritable mental health crisis in the United States. 
So U.S. bishops want to do something about it. With this public service announcement, the U.S. CCB launched the National Catholic Mental Health Campaign. We spoke with Archbishop Boris Gudziak, chairman of the U.S. CCB's Committee on Domestic Justice and Human Development, about what inspired them to act. And so we have a lot of issues, uh, teenage suicide, but also suicide in uh, the advanced age group, over 80. The campaign comes at a time when depression and suicidal tendencies are on the rise. According to the National Institute for Mental Health, in 2021, nearly 58 million people were classified as having a mental illness. And for more than 14 million, that illness was considered severe. And yet, there's still a stigma surrounding it. And we need to get over that stigma uh, and uh, we need to minister. The bishops are hoping through prayer, discussion and advocacy, we can remove the stigma, spread awareness and make sure everyone who needs help gets help. You're not alone. The church is with you. Uh, we want to we want people to know that the problem that you have, the cross that you carry is important. The bishops held a novena in the month of October. You can still find the daily prayers on their website, usccb.org, and search mental health novena. And finally tonight, a new flock has arrived at the Basilica of St. Patrick's Old Cathedral in Lower Manhattan. Meet the Soho sheep. These three fleece covered guests are visiting Old St. Pat's from a farm in upstate New York. But for them, this is a working vacation. The sheep will be tending the grounds of the church's cemetery. It was a tradition started almost 10 years ago by a former pastor of the Basilica. Tommy Wilkinson, the president of Tommy's New York, which offers tours of the grounds, feeds and tends to the flock. He says you can visit the Soho sheep for the next month or so, but there's one catch. You can get up close to see them by taking the tours. Uh, what you can't do, you can't pet them because, believe it or not, you need a petting license to pet sheep here in New York City. Of course, you need a license to do everything out here. <laughs> this year's flock are named Patrick for St. Patrick, Faustina for St. Faustina, and get this, Fleece Witherspoon. Clever. To book a tour with Tommy and see the Soho sheep, just go to takeawalk.com. Sounds like fun. That is this current news update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.